Mate, all we need is the game to grow. It's got to get out there. We're really passionate about that mm. at Rugby M. And the project of passion for you has been to write this book. Tell us a little bit about the book. Well, you know, I um, when I, s I started doing a bit of promo for it, I set myself the task of, uh, of having a different answer to the question. So what's your book about? And I really think I could come up with 100 accurate answers. Uh, the most cynical uh, um, answer would be it's about a midlife crisis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I went to, I went to uh, 52 gigs and 52 games in 52 weeks. And, um, and that was initially going to be what the book was about, kind of a reportage, you know, b uh, just a bit of reporting, a bit of travel, writing, a bit of, uh, um, a, a bit of a jolly. But then I, you know, I learned some things about my own background, you know, I, I'm adopted and I didn't know much about the first three months of my life. And so, uh, um, and I realised that if I hadn't been uh, dumped, like dumped, I say dumped, but if I hadn't been adopted, um, and, 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 and put in a rugby league town like Wollongong, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers uh, know what I'm talking about, if you, if, if you weren't in this part of the country, would you like rugby league? Does it have an intrinsic value that would have attracted you anyway? Or are you just a product of your upbringing? So it ended up being a bit of a story about identity. You know, that we think these things are what we are. You know, we think we like this sort of music and this sort of sport and that sort of beer and that sort of, you know, person, uh, that sort of work. But actually, they're... Um, Actually, these things come down to very arbitrary things. Like, and for me, it was uh, the first three months of my life. You know, my family was uh, quite uh, sort of the, the, in the twenties. They were kind of bohemians. You know, the, um, uh, my my grandfather was a surgeon. Um, my my grandmother was a socialite, and that is not the sort of thing where you're going to end up following the Illawarra Steelers and Iron Maiden. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, so I so I thought those things were um, essential to who I am. Uh, um, and then I had to now go back and go. Well, what if, what if things were different? What would I like? And what do I like about these things? And what uh, what is their intrinsic value? So it 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 went from being just a piece of gonzo journalism um, to being something a little bit more deeper. You know. So yeah. A bit of deepness. I like that, Steve. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar. You said about where you where you ended up. Obviously, um, completely by accident mm. from obviously being placed. Uh, Chef Walker had a similar story. He wasn't adopted, but his family moved from Harrells over to Unslet, and because of the area we're in, he started playing rugby league. It's mm -hmm. completely the same kind of story. But I've got to ask you: in those fifty-two weeks, which was the best gig you went to? Which was the best game you went to? Um, yeah, the best game. Jeez, oh, I'll start with the best gig. Actually, I, so I saw went to some big gigs. I saw uh, Guns and Roses in Nashville at, at in tight at uh, the home of the Tennessee Titans and I saw ACDC here at uh, um, uh, City of Manchester Stadium Etihad uh, with Axl Rose singing but I think the best uh, the best um, gig I saw was at a leagues club on the central coast right at the end there was a band called the Screaming Jets from Newcastle who were big in the 80s and actually the singer Dave Gleeson he used to referee with Tony Archer uh, <laughs> his uh, brothers on the coaching staff at the Knights and uh, as, a, as a kid he got a neck injury when he was 12 he played up in Newcastle and got a neck injury when he was 12, had to give up rugby league, so he took up being a touch judge. Imagine that, a rock star as a touch <laughs> judge. So, um, th you know, and the best game, nothing really sticks out. It was, you know, um, it was just interesting. I went to an, I went to, uh, you know, I think the best experience I had at rugby league, and I, I'm not talking about rating the game as a spectacle, but the best experience I had at rugby league is obviously in December, it's very hard. To, well, part of it was uh, thanks to you, you helped me. I went to a Queens game yeah. here in Leeds. Because it's very hard, to find, very hard to find rugby league anywhere in the world in December, you know. Uh, I could have gone in Jamaica, but I couldn't afford it. So, um, yeah, I went to a game in, uh, here in Leeds, uh, an amateur game, and that was, that was a great experience, you know. Like, no touch judges, like the, the crossbar was like that. And, uh, and the banter, like the players are bantering with the crowd during the game. You know, almost with the ball in their hands, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, but I also went to France for a weekend and saw three games there. And that was a wonderful experience, just the way... Rugby league is still ingrained in the culture in the south of France, even though it's completely non-mainstream. Yeah. Uh, aside from Catalans, you know, so and it's still like it still it means so much to people there, you know. Um, so I would say the best experience I had at rugby league in the course of the book was the weekend in France. But I I, I can't really say the best game, the best spectacle. I, I guess I'd have to have have a leaf through the book again, you know. It's, uh, what's the book called? It's called Touchstones. It. It's called Touchstones, and it's um. Finally out here in the UK, uh, like in September. So pretty much now, uh, you can. And um, I would ask people that I, uh, um, I believe in Australia, our issue was to actually the book sitting in the stores, and our issue was to do this, and so people would go and get it. 
Um, it's the opposite here. The, the issue is that we we need people to go to stores and say they want to they get want it in. It, yeah. Get it in. Yeah, so get it's it scratching shed. It's called touchstones. And once a few that happens, hopefully, the, you know, they'll once they sell more will come in and, and we'll get a bit of a, a roll. But it's a it's a it's a book about it's like the Seinfeld of books. It's a book about nothing, <laughs> but it's also a book about everything. <laughs> Outstanding. In that is the one, the only Steve Mascot. Cheers for coming hey, in, it's mate. It's nice you to have me in. It's no, great to finally a... visit your uh, wonderful studios. Thank you, mate. Cheers.